One of the quickest ways to up your vocal sound is to find a microphone that fits your voice. But with all the options out there, what the hell do you even pick? I think I can help with that. I've spent the last month testing the eight most popular microphone options for recording vocals. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I've found and provide live sound tests for each of them. And some of the results I found were surprising. I've also made a comparison chart of all of these microphones on my website if you're really itching to find out my favorites. Link in the description. Let's get started. Please like and subscribe. This video took a lot of time to make. To start off, we have one of the most iconic microphones to ever grace the stage, the Shure SM58. This is by far and away the most popular vocal microphone of all time for live performances. If you've seen a live performance, you've probably heard this mic. This mic is affordable, normally clocking in at under 100 bucks new. I'd recommend checking the price using the links below because it may have changed since filming. And on top of being a budget microphone enthusiast must have, this thing is built like solid steel. Are you worried about dropping your mic? Doesn't matter. Even a dented windscreen won't stop this bad boy. I, I think I have four of them and they're all dented. This mic is also great for studio recordings, especially on vocals that are recorded in untreated rooms without blankets on the walls or even DIY acoustic panels. I made a video on how to make your own DIY acoustic panels right up here if you want to learn. But this microphone isn't perfect. It lacks a lot of the high-end sparkle that other condenser mics have and isn't as ideal for studio recordings. For that reason, my final rating is a bit lower than some of the others. But enough of me rambling, let's hear how it sounds. For all the microphones, I'll play an unprocessed version with no plugins, and then I'll play a processed version. All of the vocal processing I'll use will come from my vocal preset pack, Vocal Magic One, which can transform a normal vocal recording into a radio-ready track with one click. And also, so the video isn't 40 minutes long, I'll only be showing a couple of song recordings in different genres to get an idea for the sound. If you want the full audio comparison and all the recordings, go visit my page on my website. Now, here's what the SM58 sounds like. Girl, don't walk away. It's getting late. Under the sheets is warmer. I made you a place to feel my embrace Oh, you stay over I'll give this microphone a 7.9 out of 10. Moving on to microphone number two. I like to think of this mic as the good looking grandpa of the Shure SM58 we just talked about, the SM7B. This silver fox is made by the same company, Shure, and almost has an equal track record of microphone famousness as the SM58. And it comes highly rated by a lot of people and by also me. The SM7B is another dynamic mic, but it's a more premium version of the 58, around $300 more premium. It's designed more for studio use than road travel, so you probably haven't seen it in a live setting. Although you probably have seen it used in podcast studios. I record all of my voiceover work on it as well. Though I am still trying to figure out the settings to adjust to sound like Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman, more Morgan Freeman. This mic is great at getting rid of unwanted room noise and it takes EQ and processing very well. It's got a warm sounding profile to it, which makes it fantastic for male singers and females who might need a little bit more beef. It's also my go-to microphone for singers who tend to yell or scream into the microphone. I personally use the SM7B on so many tracks, I've lost count. Even if I don't record lead vocals with it, I track almost all of my background vocals on this mic. Its warm profile helps them sit in the mix really nicely. However, this mic isn't perfect. It requires a ton of input gain that most budget budget audio interfaces can't handle. That means you'll also have to purchase a device to help up the signal. The most common one and the cheapest is called a cloud lifter. This had me knock some points off my final rating, but it's still a fantastic microphone. Also, fun fact, this is the mic that Michael Jackson used to record his Thriller album, so yeah, it's good enough for Michael. Let's hear what it sounds Waiting like. Waiting in the dark, I'm kicking these rocks in the park cars. I'm not a rock star, I never ever gone far. I'm just a man here sitting, wishing for a pool open, I could jump in it. Shout out to my friends, they always got my back. I would buy you all the glass if I only had the cash, but I'm a little short right now. I always wind up short somehow. Hey. And I will give my final rating of the SM7B a 9.4 
out of 10. Moving right along to microphone number three, the last dynamic microphone of the list. It's called the RE20 from Electro Voice. Although it might not be as popular as some of the other mics in the list, it's still an iconic dynamic microphone. It's also extremely hefty. It costs around the same as the Shure SM7B at around $450, but once again, check the prices down below. But even though they're both dynamic microphones, the SM7B and the RE20 have different sound characteristics. The RE20 has a more pronounced high end than the SM7B. Well, having a little less mid-range. This could sound good on some lower voices that need a bit more help in the high-end sparkle, but for an already thin sounding voice, this microphone might add a bit too much harshness, which absolutely factored into this microphone's final rating. One of the coolest features about the RE20 is that it has almost no proximity effect. The proximity effect is the closer you get to a microphone, the more low end of a sound is boosted. The RE20 doesn't have that, which can make your final vocal way easier to deal with if you're prone to eating the microphone while you record. Take a listen to some live sound examples. We rolled a J in the back of a cab in Detroit. You roll YOLO on the photo from your Polaroid. We tried to smoke it, but we broke it. Had us laughing all night when we were young, dumb kids searching for a good time. I'll rate this microphone a 9.0. Out of 10. All right, that will wrap up the dynamic microphones on this list. Keep in mind, if you don't have any acoustic treatment or sound absorption on your walls, the dynamic microphones are your best friend. Condensers are more prone to catching every single detail, and that includes the extra room noise that you might have. But for those willing to put up some treatment and go the extra mile, let's move onwards to the condensers. The next microphone up is the first microphone I ever bought. This mic started my own recording journey, and 12 years later, it's still kicking strong. It's called the Audio-Technica AT2020. You know, I really wish microphones would have more badass names than just letters and numbers, but that's what it is. For the price, this microphone swings well above its weight class. You can buy the AT2020 new for around $100, and it's still my first recommendation for beginners getting started in the space of home recording. It lacks some of the clarity that more expensive mics bring to the table, but for only $100, it's really hard to go wrong here. However, this mic's sound profile loses some points in the final ranking. It doesn't quite stack up to some of the more expensive items on this list. However, in some of the test I found, it sounded on par with some microphones that cost twice as much as it. I'll let the results speak for themselves. Don't wanna over, overthink it, but she makes it so much harder to breathe. Don't wanna mess up our situation, but if she thinks that she won't stick around me, Oh, I'm a overthink. I'm a overthink. And for the final rating, this mic, I will give it an 8.4 out of 10. On to the next microphone on this list. It comes from Rhodes and it's called the NT1. This microphone and the one that I tested happens to be the newest generation, Generation 5, which comes with a 32-bit float, which makes it almost impossible to distort. Kind of cool. Also, this microphone shouldn't be confused with the NT1A, which is it's slightly brighter cousin. It's very similar, but, but different. The NT1 is a large diaphragm condenser microphone that's one of the best-selling large diaphragm condensers ever made. It's specifically geared towards the home studio musician and recording at home. Its budget-friendly price point of $160 makes it accessible for anyone looking to get a great starting microphone. It's a step up from the AT2020 in price and, in my opinion, sound quality. The NT1 offers a crisp, detailed sound recording that's filled with a lot of top-end shine. The shine sounds great on low voices, but I found it could be too harsh on others. And you guessed it, that absolutely will affect my final ranking. On my voice, I think it sounds pretty good, but I'll let you hear it for yourself. Waiting in the dark, I'm kicking these rocks in the park cars. I'm not a rock star, I never ever gone far. I'm just a man here sitting, wishing for a pool open, I could jump in it. Shout out to my friends, they always got my back. I would buy you all a glass if I only had the cash, but I'm a little short right now. I always wind up short somehow. 
For the final rating of the NT1, I'll give it an 8.6 out of 10. The next microphone I'll be covering is called the WA87 by Warm Audio. The WA87 is a condenser mic that was made to emulate the Neumann U87, one of the most popular vocal mics ever made, and it's quite the beast. The folks at Warm Audio did a pretty good job of getting it close, but the biggest kicker is this mic is only $700 new versus the Neumann U87, which will cost you around $3,200. You're getting a very similar soundscape and an almost identical body for way less of the price nice. The WA87 has the Neumann vintage tone to it with more of a heavy focus on the mid-range than some of the other condenser mics on this list. This means that your vocals might not sound as good right after the recording as others, but this mic takes EQ very well, and any warmness you record can be changed with some simple processing afterwards. This mic will also serve well as a studio workhorse, recording any and all types of instruments and voice types you throw its way. It's perfect for the musician looking to record vocals and other live instruments as well which gives it some extra points for my final score. Check out what it sounds like. Oh, you stay over Cause I can never find somebody like you Find somebody like you Even if I try to A million places I could go But I knew I will never find you, find somebody like you. And for the final ranking of this microphone, the WA87, I will give it a 9.2 out of 10. The second to last microphone I'll be reviewing on the list is the AKG C214. And it was probably the most surprising microphone that I recorded. This is another large diaphragm condenser made to use on everything from vocals to drums to pianos. It's the little brother of another famous microphone called the AKG C14. And when compared, the C214 still holds its own. The microphone comes in at around $500 brand new, and it's a great mic for any vocalist to have in the studio. It's a solid step up in sound from the NT1 and the AT2020, providing a detail in clearness that the other two budget microphones are lacking. The microphone seems especially present to my ears in the high mids between 4000 and 6000 hertz. That range is one of the most important ranges to get right for that professional quality vocals, especially modern hip hop or pop vocals. And though you can always add in that range with EQ afterwards, the results aren't always the same. It's best to get it recorded right from the start with a nice microphone like the C214. This microphone might not be great for more laid back folk or acoustic tracks, but its clarity lends itself well to more modern hip hop or pop vocals like I mentioned earlier. Check out the recordings I took of this we one. We rolled a J in the back of a cab in Detroit. You wrote YOLO on the photo from your Polaroid. We tried to smoke it, but we broke it. We were laughing all night when we were young, young kids looking for a good time. And as a final rating, I'll give the AKG C214 a 9.1 out of 10. If you've liked the processing that you've heard so far on all the vocals, you can do that with one click if you get my vocal preset pack called Vocal Magic One, link in the description below. We finally made it to the last microphone on this list. This one happens to be the most expensive, and it also comes from one of the most prestigious microphone brands in the world. Neumann. Think of them like the Rolls Royce of microphone brands. The model I'll be reviewing today is called the Neumann TLM 103. Like all mics in the Neumann lineup, the TLM 103 is pricey. To get a new one, it'll cost you around $1,200. And because of that high price tag, I recommend this microphone for more serious musicians and vocalists only. The sound quality of the mic itself is unbelievably crispy, and at times, too much so. The TLM 103 has a heavy focus on the high end, which can deliver some amazing sounding vocals. Whenever I use the TLM 103, I find myself having to hardly EQ my voice at all. It's as if the sound profile was made for some ultra present and modern vocals right out of the box. But as I stated earlier, this high end focus can also be hard to get rid of. If you've already got a thinner sounding singer, especially a female singer, this extra brightness will probably be too much to handle. On the other hand, if you have a more robust and deep singer, this microphone will sound amazing. My biggest problem with this mic is the lack of versatility it has in the studio for its price tag. Although it sounds good on the occasional deep voice vocalist, it's thin 
thinness can be hard to transfer to other instruments. Don't get me wrong, it still sounds great, but I had to take that into consideration for the final rating. I'll let you decide for yourself. Take a listen to the live sound results. Don't wanna over, overthink it, but she makes it so much harder to breathe. Don't wanna mess up our situation. But if I think that she won't stick around me, oh, I'm all over thin. And for the final rating of this microphone, the TLM 103 will get an 8.9. Out of 10. If you want to hear even more of the live sound test I did on these microphones, check out the article on my website by clicking the link in the description. It's important to remember that while the saying, you get what you pay for, is still true for most microphones, it's not always the whole story. Every voice in every studio will have a microphone that fits them perfectly, and it might be different for everyone. Out of every microphone I covered on this list, they are all totally viable choices for you and your studio. You really can't go wrong with any of them, and that's why all all of them are such popular choices. With that being said, I did have two microphones that stuck out to me, and here are my final mic recommendations. My first recommendation is the SM7B. It's amazing for noisy room environments and my go-to microphone for background vocals. I use it on every track I work on. Once you get past getting the proper gain on it, you'll be so happy that you got it. And now my second recommendation and my favorite mic for recording vocals, the WA87. It's not the most expensive item on this list, but it's by far the one I use the most often. The U87 that it's modeled after is such a classic vocal sound. Although it doesn't sound exactly like the original, it's so close to it, it's hard to tell the difference. It's my first weapon of choice when I'm going to record my voice. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy this video I made up here on how to process your vocals after you've recorded them. Go check it out.